Madam Speaker, this morning we woke to another front page story in the Canberra Times about the brutal murder of Car Tara Costigan. Tara had sought and gained an interim domestic violence order against the man who is now charged with murdering her. She'd received that just one day before her death. Her sister and another man were injured in the same attack. Tara had two sons and a little girl not much more than a week old. Her family want us to remember that she died defending her children. Tara hoped that the company of her family, the provisions of the law, the resources of her government would protect her. They did not. Tara Costigan is not the only, is far from the only Australian woman. Our legal system, our governments, our society have failed. Rinabel Tiglau Blackmore died from injuries sustained when, in fear of her life, she jumped from a moving car. Layla Alavi was stabbed to death. Nikita Chawla was found dead in a unit in Brunswick West. Aina Ismagol was found dead in her home. Kerry Michael was found beaten to death at Mount Rowland. Adele Collins was stabbed to death at her home. Fabiana Palharis died of injuries from being attacked with an axe in her home. Renee Carter was stabbed to death. Mr Deputy Speaker, these are just the cases where police have laid charges and identified those charged as partners or ex-partners of the victims. And they are just the cases this year. Our usual formulation is to say that nearly one in five or 17 per cent of Australian women aged 18 and over have experienced violence from a partner or a former partner since the age of 15. That is nearly one and a half million women. More than 130,000 Australian women have been victims of violence by a current or previous partner in the last 12 months. Mr Deputy Speaker, we have to ask ourselves how many thousands of women right now, this afternoon, tonight, uh, will fear for their own lives, their own safety and that of their children in their own homes. How many have fled everything they know, everything that is familiar, changed jobs, taken their children in the middle of the night, moved house, moved state, left behind the support of family and friends, and perhaps not for the first time, perhaps, as the Leader of the Opposition said, have moved again and again and again in a desperate attempt to escape. How many have had to leave their work because the perpetrator of the violence knows where they work? How many have become poor because they're no longer able to work, because the perpetrator turns, up to their, perpetrator turns up to their workplace and harasses them? How many are afraid to leave a violent relationship because they know that one of the most dangerous times is when they leave the relationship, that leaving will lead to their murder, or they're terrified that if they leave and take the children, the children will be pursued or if they leave without the children, that the children will be hurt or worse in revenge. In fear that the mechanisms of the courts and the resources of the law will not ultimately deter or prevent their abuser from killing them. Or how many have stayed because they've got nowhere else to go. These women are not statistics, Mr Deputy Speaker. Each and every one of them is a daughter, a sister, sometimes a mother, an aunt, each one of them is a part of our community and to each and every one of them we owe an unyielding determination that this will stop. Because aside from being relatives, mothers, daughters, sisters, aunts, every one of these women is a human being and every one of them is a citizen of our country and is owed this. Since the beginning of this year, one family, more than one family, every week has been left to mourn a loss that should never have happened. More than one family a, a week has been left with a hole in their hearts that will never be filled. And to, and to them, too, we owe it to say, this must stop. We call on the government to stand with us today, with all Australians, 
all of us here, to say this will stop. Yeah.